My name is Peter. Um, I was diagnosed with prostate cancer in January of 2009. Uh, for those of you that have been recently diagnosed with prostate cancer, you know that the numbers mean a lot. And in my case, I was diagnosed with a stage T1C cancer. My Gleason score was a 6 and my PSA was a 4.2. Um, I think everyone knows that there's been some controversy around the accuracy of the PSA testing, but in my case, it clearly was accurate and diagnosed uh, a, the presence of cancer. Getting a cancer diagnosis is obviously a, a pretty traumatic thing to go through. Uh, I remember when I actually was getting the information from my urologist and I heard those fateful words, yes, we found the presence of cancer after my biopsy, it was uh, kind of surreal. I interviewed probably 30 people around the country to get a, uh, an understanding of what I was up against. And some people I talked to had had radical prostatectomies uh, and were rendered impotent and incontinent. Uh, some people had gone through um, proton beam therapy, which required having to relocate for up to eight or nine weeks at a time. Uh, one of my uh, colleagues, uh, I do a little baseball umpiring, and he happens to be an uh, external beam radiation uh, oncologist. And I went to see him for a second opinion and looked at that option, and that was another nine-week daily routine. Uh, I never entertained surgery. Surgery was an absolute last resort. It all came down to having to decide, you know, what's the most practical thing for me, what's the least invasive, and then I happened to get, you know, through my readings, educated about CyberKnife. And that really became a real eye-opener. I'm a very kind of reason, logic-driven person. And when I heard about the fact that the treatment could be collapsed down into a four-day period, that it was non-invasive, that it had a linear tracking system that took into consideration the fact that the prostate moves during treatment, this all resonated with me. I think the most terrifying thing about being a man diagnosed with prostate cancer, particularly for me at the age of 55, which is very young, uh, are the issues of incontinence and erectile dysfunction and impotence. And fortunately, I'm happy to say that in the aftermath of the treatment, uh, I uh, still have my potency, I'm not incontinent, and my numbers have gone from 4.2 down to 1.6. I'm at the nine-month mark right now, and so far things have tracked you know, really well. The most important thing you can do for yourself is to get educated. Educate yourself to a point where you're as conversant on the topic as the people treating you. And there is no one right answer. Ultimately, it's going to be a very deeply personal decision you're going to make, but do it from a position of strength by being informed and by being educated. Do not necessarily take one practitioner's point of view because in some respects they are selling their craft. And you need to ultimately arrive at what is the, the best course of action for you based on your diagnosis, the stage of cancer you have, and take your time. Don't rush into something. Don't hit the panic button. You have time to make an informed decision. I'm self-employed. I work in marketing communications and it's a very demanding business. You cannot step away from a client base for that long without losing the client, quite frankly. And so that was a factor. It wasn't you know, the sole factor, but it was an important factor. On Christmas night, 2008, I proposed to my now wife, and five weeks later, I got the cancer diagnosis, which immediately challenged our relationship, and it was a really, really a tough situation to to have to go through. And fortunately, my wife, who stuck with me throughout the entire process, was as educated on this illness as I am, uh, really worked with me in conjunction to arrive at a decision that was best for us. Uh, hopefully your uh, viewership is not faint of heart, but in the spirit of my wife, on the second day of my treatment, she said, let's see if the CyberKnife is having any impact. And we made love on the second day of my treatment. And what was that a reaffirming day? It really was. <laughs> For four straight days, I went in, I laid down and listened to my iPod. I got caught up in my music library. It was kind of relaxing by the third day. After the third treatment, I did have some difficulty with urination. And I was given Flomax as an as a option, and I never did end up taking the Flomax. I ended up resolving the situation on my own, and I've never had an issue since. I had my treatment at uh, UCSF. I was uh, treated by Dr. Alex Gottschalk, 
and the uh, staff there was really, really warm. It, it was fascinating, actually. You know, I, I work in technology, so I, I'm really appreciative of uh, technical gadgetry, and this was uh, an amazing piece of machinery. You have to bring a sense of humor to life. Life, what is the philosophy? Life is a fatal disease. It's a very existential comment. But it was true that you need to live your life and make every day count, and that this is not a distance. It is, you know, part and parcel of living. And what's the most intelligent course of action you can take to get through this? And I feel like I've made absolutely the right call here.